Hey everybody, this is Joel Hoekstra of Whitesnake. Uh, I'm going to show you my gear today uh, here in lovely Hammond, Indiana, and I'm going to start with the guitars. Okay, so when I joined Whitesnake, I just sort of had a vision of like, I just want to start with all new gear and all new guitars on this. At the time, we were working on the Purple album, so I kind of felt the need for not only, of course, the signature Les Paul sound on the gig, but um, also strats at times. So I reached out to um, Mike Tempesta at Fender and uh, Steve Christmas at the Gibson Custom Shop and had a vision of getting uh, a white, the white sink medallion embedded in the body of two Strats and two Les Pauls, um, which Fender and Gibson routed and did for me respectively. Um, the medallions were actually made at a mint. Uh, they're called Northwest Ter Territorial Mint. Um, so it's like a bronze medallion that actually has a little bit of weight to it and uh, the black enamel is what gave it texture. Um, anyway, I just thought I'd do something special for the gig and um, it's, it's really worked out nicely. Uh, the, the Fat 50 uh, single coils, and it's actually a Doug Aldrich humbucker. Um, Doug hooked me up when I, when I joined the band with those. Um, and I don't know what else to tell you. It's a standard USA Strat, but boy, it gives you a nice variety of tones. I use the, the humbucker sound on it right now for um, slow and easy, playing the signature slide thing on the gig. And last year, like I said, a lot of the purple stuff I was playing on Mistreated and um, you keep on moving for those that know those songs out there. Um, this guitar right now is only coming out once in the set. Um, and I'm just alternating whether or not I use the white strat or the black strat this year on slow and easy. So um, I'm basically starting at what's used the least in the set right now. Um, but like I said last year with a heavier focus on the purple material, uh, that was a little different. Um, anyway, but I've been, for the most part, going with the humbucker, um, the Doug Aldrich humbucker that um, Sir... Uh, manufacturers um, and that's just the right tone for that song last year I did a lot of using the the rhythm pickup um, for the purple stuff um, anyway this particular guitar has a matching partner so essentially the exact same thing but in white um, that was like I said the the vision of having a black and white Les Paul and a black and white Strat going into the gig um, and anyway that's where I, I started and I suppose I should go to the Les Pauls from there um, let me start with the white one. This is probably my favorite of the new guitars that I had made. Just for whatever reason, the overall sound and playability, even though the, the <laughs> it's the same material that made the Black Les Paul, but this one just has a slightly different sound and playability to it. Um, anyway, you can see there, again, there's the medallion. And the stencil was created by Anthony Bass at Gibson. So like I said, Steve Christmas really helped me out at Gibson Custom with these. And here is its black matching partner. Um, as far as the pickups go, I think the treble position is the 498T. And then in the rhythm position, it's the 490R in each one. Um, I really love the sound of the Gibson Customs. Um, yeah, a little different than some of the USA vintage stuff, but um, just a, a clarity and overall balance that gives me the punch and the sustain and the, the cut and the warmth yet. The, everything I'm looking for really in the sound of a guitar. Uh, I'm using Ernie Ball Power Slinkies. I've uh, been with Ernie Ball really my whole career. Um, I believe the gauge is 11 through 48, um, which some people say 11s, man, but we're down a whole step with White Snakes, so. It's actually with a shorter scale, like a Gibson, and, and tuned on a whole step, man, it almost feels like, you know, 10s or even 9s at times to me. Um, definitely loose enough that I can get a nice wide vibrato if I want and controlled. Um, and <laughs> I have some friends at a smaller company called Atomic Guitar Works. They're very ambitious guys, um, and they made me this with, uh, for the Purple Tour last year. These are all Swarovski crystals, hand laid one by one by Harry Howard. Um, enormous patience on that fine gentleman. Uh, once again, the pickups are uh, Doug Aldrich pickups from Sir, um, courtesy of Doug. He helped me out with that. And basically, the inlays are all just astrological signs that have importance in my life. Um, you know, my my sign and my kids' signs and whatnot. And um, so anyway, just uh, not that I'm really big into astrology or anything, I'm not at all, but um, I thought it was kind of cool. 
made for a, something interesting and a good story and something personal with um, with the guitar. Uh, I did think when I got this, I thought, man, this is an amazing looking guitar, but to play that a whole show or a bunch of songs is yeah, going to be yeah. just over the top. So I've really just grabbed this guitar for my individual, my my real solo on stage during the show um, because I I always flash back to when I saw Dio as a kid and um, Seventh Row Vivian Campbell played the guitar with the neon outline on it that lit up and I was as a kid I just thought that was cool and I guess in a way this guitar became that for me just like kind of equally a showpiece as well as well as a, a really nice sounding guitar it really does sound great so um, I don't feel like I'm compromising in that department when I when I go to play it um, he's got those interesting hip shot tuners that he makes and people might wonder what this is I do a lot of tapping at the very end of my solo and I'm just using the hair tie to um, I don't like to do that normally, but we're really loud in White Snake <laughs> with a lot of gain. So it can the low E can start taking off in the A sometimes. So I've uh, fallen back on this crutch lately. But uh, anyway, there you go. That's the electric guitars I'm using in our set this year. Yeah, I mean, I think definitely most people know that the Les Paul and White Snake are synonymous that tone. So certainly the Les Pauls are used for the the bulk of the set. I would say. Yeah, everything except the guitar solo and slow and easy this year. Uh, last year, like I said, a little more strat in there. And uh, there was, there were times last year when we toured the UK where I didn't have a guitar solo in the show that I used the Atomic uh, for some songs. And um, like I said, it was almost like too much. It'd come out with it and people would be pointing at it instead of listening to the song. So I think it fits really well with uh, using for a guitar solo. Um, if we venture over here, I have, we're playing Sailing Ships this year, and part of my guitar solo is actually on an acoustic. Uh, we have a quick transition, so of course we use the, uh, the Gracie stand, which I've always thought is kind of a fun rock move anyway. I remember as a kid watching Alex Lifeson do that and think how cool that was for a quick transition. So I just sling my electric behind my back to, to play Sailing Ships, and we go into the next song, and I'm rocking. Uh, anyway, Taylor I've been with really for a long time. They've just been really good to me. Um, amazingly consistent guitars. They sound great plugged in and mic'd up. Um, they play consistent. Um, it's, I just always get a good sound with them. Um, so it, it works magnificently for me in both uh, ways on this gig. And um, I think anybody that comes will hear that in the house hopefully. Okay, so over here, what's powering it all? Um, a couple of friends of mine turned me on to Dave Friedman's heads, uh, I'd say about three years ago. And these are just his, uh, the BI-100, the brown I-100. So, uh, I mean, you hear it often that, oh, this is just like a Marshall with muscle or like a modded Marshall, but that, that's truly what these do sound like. So essentially it's a Marshall-ish tone. Um, but I think for a higher gain gig, I don't have to use a pedal to push the front end. I get enough gain with these. Um, it helps to keep some of the noise down um, between songs. I think we don't end a song and you hear shh coming through the PA. Um, so they've been really great. I mean, very durable. They're, it is a two channel amp with a boost for lead. So I'm able to get a, a nice clean sound as well. Um, and they've served me really well in these two tours with this band. So um, no complaints. And up here, um, uh, for any effects, I'm not using the modeling with this, but just using my, uh, my Axe FX2 that I've used previously um, on gigs. I, I used a fractal with um, Trans-Siberian Orchestra and with Rock of Ages, and there I used the actual modeling because those gigs were more of a direct. Um, but in this circumstance, I'm just using it for delay and reverb. There's not a ton of effects with Whitesnake. It's very much a, a straight ahead gig, but um, it's really been handy because Tommy Aldrich has given me the BPMs for each song. We do a lot of it to click. We're not hearing the click, but Tommy is. So even if I just want to put a quick slap back eighth note on my rhythm, it's in time with each song. I'm able to um, just have a different bank uh, for each song, and, and that's been great. Uh, really a nice difference from just having like a rhythm delay and a lead delay um, to have the individual delay levels for each song has been really handy, I think. Um, just above that, we have um, the, the TC Electronics G-Force, which is really just serving as a backup for the uh, Fractal at this point. I don't, I don't use it, um, but it's there if there's a problem, uh, which is always important to have a backup for everything out on the road. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, just above that, I have the Rackwa, 
uh, the Dunlop rack, Crybaby rack wah, which is just great, man. I have um, just the automatic touch uh, controllers out front. There's actually two. There's one at my station and one in the center for my solo. Um, and that's just so handy. Uh, last year there was Deep Purple songs like Stormbringer in the set, where I just had two bar overdubs in the studio of me playing with a crybaby. So it's just, just to do the toe push while you're trying to sing backups and everything really was was tough. And just to have this unit and have the uh, the crybaby turn on automatically when your foot hits it is it, just perfect for the gig. Um, not saying it's the way to go for everybody, but it's on with Whitesnake I think it is. A lot of the, the crybaby playing I do is responses to vocals. Um, so it served me well in that department. Um, just above it you can see the multi-selector and what that's doing is just basically controlling which of the guitars I'm using. Um, we have a four channel uh, Sur uh, ULXD uh, 4Q wireless system. So each guitar is operating at a different frequency. It's really nice, we don't have to worry about doubling up during a show. And basically you can see slide, that really just means slow and easy. So that's the Strat. Um, Ace has that labeled and we're just able to yeah, obviously just make make a quick change with guitars. Um, it's better than having to fidget and turn on packs and things like that on and off while you're making guitar changes. Um, I've been in that world before where you're operating on one frequency and it's it's hard with guitar techs. You have to coordinate who's when you're turning it on and turning it off. So this, this makes it a lot easier. Up here you can see we're still kind of going old school with the changing, the Ground Control Pro um, from Voodoo Lab. Um, I can uh, turn on a tuner out there. This is obviously back in, in Ace's station back here. Um, and this technically serves as the master. Um, each song has a bank. So like if we're starting this, the set tonight with Bad Boys, you can see Bad Intro. That's just a ton of delay and an octave where I'm making uh, ethereal noises at the very, very top of the show. And then when we kick into the rhythm, it says Bad Rhythm. So Ace can do the changes for me if I'm in a section of the stage where I'm kind of hitting some rock poses or whatever. Um, I do the majority of them, honestly, but there are a couple if I'm center stage where I can't get back to my station in time and Ace does help me with those, um, which is great. So anyway, you can see once we finish Bad Boys, you're just kind of going through the set as you go up. I'm giving away our set list, but you can see Slide It In would come next. And it's just every, all the songs kind of have a, a rhythm and, and a lead patch for the most part. Some of them have specialty patches, songs like um, Judgment Day. There's lots of stuff. Steve Vai did all that stuff with the uh, even tide on there, which I'm emulating with pitch shifting on the fractal. So there are a couple moments like that where I'm using the fractal for more than just delay and verb. Um, anyway, there you go. Let's see my station out here. So. Here we are, as I said, I basically have what's the slave. You can see from changing it to Judgment Day last back there on Ace's Master, it's there. Um, but I can go down to the beginning of the show, bad intro, and that's where I'm going to need to be to start the show. Um, and I can always turn it on and off individual things. We do have like a phase shifter in the loop that I used to use with the Deep Purple songs. Um, out here for tuning, I'm just using the old school Boss TU3. And if I sit on tune long enough, that, that turns that on. and and I'm ready to tune if there's an emergency out here. For the most part though, I usually don't have to do that. Um, Ace is really on it, and if you have a great tech here, stuff is kind of in for the night. It's one of the uh, true luxuries of being in a, a band like Whitesnake, where you have production rehearsals and a fantastic crew. Um, it really helps a lot to uh, give you, like, it takes a, a lot off your mind to not have to be worrying about tuning your guitar yourself between songs and things like that. Um, but I've certainly been there in my day. Um, anyway, here we have a little slide holder, um, so the quick transition into slow and easy, and I use the slide also in Still of the Night. I'm trying to think if there's anything else this year that it's on, but um, it's really handy to have that there for a quick change. So everybody can see my throwaway picks. Very cool. I have a great pick guy, JC Powers at Star Access Picks, who's um, just given me lots of cool picks over the years. I find it's um, one of the things that really helps you to connect with the fans. They love to. Um, I love getting them out to the fans, number one, um, but I find that there's a lot of people that love to stay like way up on their pick collections and have everyone you've ever used, so try to come up with new ones for every scenario I'm playing in. Um, 
what to tell you about. The, the Sennheiser mic, actually kind of cool, has a motion sensor on it. So if I'm not standing in front of it, you can see it's not engaged. So that it cuts off any kind of additional noise coming through. So it's only going to turn on right when I get in front uh, to sing my backgrounds. So that's nice for kind of cleaning up your in-ear mix. Uh, loses all that kind of drum cymbals and um, just amp noise kind of hitting your, your microphone. Um, so that's been really handy. Uh, we spoke earlier about the 580 rock controller. Like I said, it's just instantly on as soon as I, I touch it. So that's just great. Like I said, for just going in for like a lick real quick, like, oh, I want to use Crybaby on this. Great. Um, so it's worked really well for me in this situation. And as I said earlier, we're kind of stashing one away over here for my solo in the middle of the show. Um, obviously, I don't want to be camped behind a mic stand if it's just me on stage or off to one side where these people over here have paid their hard-earned money to sit and they're going, why is that guy playing guitar way over there? So we try and get me at least kind of to the center of the stage a bit um, to be able to, to wail and, and uh, use the crybaby in the center. Anyway, I mean, that's, I believe, pretty much it for my setup this year. Uh, I hope uh, it's educational for you guys. Um, certainly a lot of fun for me to uh, show a lot of people out there who are great guitar players, I'm quite certain, uh, just how it's working out here. And uh, I hope to see you guys out at a show, and uh, by all means, say hello if you do.